Happy Friday. Happy Friday. So uh, for those of you who don't know, um, she's very well presented with the Cornerstone moniker behind me. <laughs> Here is Joelle to give us a brief mortgage update. And uh, I know there's a lot to talk about. Yep. So go, go ahead there, Joelle. Okay. Uh, let me actually let me mute everybody first and then uh and then we'll uh let you run all right sounds good there you go you're good to go all right good morning everyone uh like we said before happy friday hope you all had a very productive week uh so in mortgage news today um actually bad news came out of europe weak economic data out of the eurozone is now breathing life into the idea that the european central bank will have to cut rates by 50 basis points. You may ask, why does this matter? Well, when you see interest rates around the globe go lower, it actually puts downward pressure on our rates. Unfortunately, since early October, we are in a market where rates are still trying to stabilize and find a bottom. We are still a little elevated due to sticky inflation, deficit spending, and fewer uh, Fed rate cuts are on the table. Actually, next week we have a, even though it's a short week, there are several high risk events crammed into those three days that can actually swing our rates again. Uh, there's tons of treasury auctions next week, con consumer confidence is coming out and the Fed minutes. So where does that leave us? What, what I'm still doing is I'm advising clients to still continue to lock the loans that are closing soon. Obviously, if you have a file that's long-term, so you could you, you could definitely you know uh, safely safely float. However, just keep an eye on where rates are moving, especially when you have weeks with uh, that have a lot of high risk events. Um, so currently, rates are between six point eight seven five and seven point one two five. Obviously, if you have a client that has less than seller credit, they are going to be in the sevens. Your jumbo rates are in the sevens. Uh, the jumbo is about seven and an eighth. And always your government product is always going to be a little bit lower than conventional and jumbo. Uh, government products about six and a half. Um, so really, that's that's it. That's all I got for mortgage. Um, but what I do want to say is next week is Thanksgiving. I want to wish you all a wonderful Thanksgiving, spending time with your family um, and, you know, being thankful and grateful. Well, thanks for the, the mortgage minute. And uh, I wanted to just... Um maybe have a, a little conversation about how all these global events really impact uh, mortgage rates and, and also maybe just add a little bit extra color to why I think it's happening. And um, if Donald Trump and the new administration um, loosens business restrictions and is, is pro um, business and pro America, like he says, these threatened tariffs that are out there will actually do a short-term raise in prices. I think that's what's spooking the market a little bit. Yeah. So if in the trade war, he <clears throat> puts a hundred percent tariff on products from China, it will double all those things at the dollar store that are coming from overseas. So I know it's complicated. We're in the real estate business and you're in the lending business and all these different global events like Europe sneezes and then it has an impact. Yeah. So um, if you have some clients that, you know, have some advanced uh, questions, I think knowing that it's not just some banker um, or the Federal Reserve that's setting interest rates, it's really a global economy and you can't separate it now. Right? Yes. Yeah. And I think from from a positive aspect, I think the, um, you know, opening up like oil and whatnot is for me logically going to lower all prices, which will allow rates to to come down. In, in my opinion, mm -hmm. um, so there's just so many things that the market needs to digest that you know when it's afraid it kind of, you know, uh, pulls back a little bit on rates. Uh, national debt needs to come down. Uh, yeah, there's there's so many different pieces here, and I don't want anybody to be lost or concerned about mortgages because you know true professionals and true lenders lend in you know uh, ridiculously low markets and challenging markets, and it's the challenging markets that really require the true professionals. So I appreciate you giving us that explanation, and uh, you know 
if you have any of our preferred lenders, if you give them an opportunity, um, I stand behind everything they do. So I'm only a call away if you ever have a concern, but I, I really almost never get a call because everything happens beautifully. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so now we're going to turn it over to, you know, today's conversation. And I really believe that a business of our, our business and any type of a service business is only as good as its um, its clients and its database. And if anybody on this call was planning to retire in two years or 22 years, what you need to do is have a very, very focused, um, a focused interest in your database because that's what's going to provide recurring revenue for you. And recurring revenue is what provides value. Okay. Um, and just to give you a little bit of context to how, um, how I view it and how the market views things like this is if you have a business that, you know, has income of a hundred thousand dollars and it increases by, you know, 10% every year versus an inc a business that has, you know, 200,000 one year, 50 another, 200 the next, 40 the next, 300 the next. Which business do you think is going to be valued more? Anybody want to want to guess? Let's just say the average of them is is similar. You know, which business would you want to have, um, would you want to own for peace of mind? And if you're on camera, if you can unmute yourself, this is a, a good time for a conversation. The constant one. The constant one. Why is that? Because you don't want to be making a hundred thousand one year, and then the next year you make thirty thousand. It's hard to live that way now because you didn't. You made so much more last year. Your spending got different. Yep. So it's consistency, right? It's you know keeping it going every year. So um, when when you look at your life. You know, you also want to be having a consistent income and a, a, a repeatable and duplicatable revenue stream. And the only way that we can really have a higher level of certainty is to get control of the people that we've transacted with in the past, the people that we know, and also focus on um, meeting new people. Okay, and that looks and smells a lot like a database, doesn't it? And I know database is something that it's not sexy in the industry, um, uh, but it, it's really necessary. And it's probably one of the biggest um, opportunities for our industry to clean up and, uh, and harvest, right? Uh, is there anyone that has a, um, a farm that provides them with consistent revenue? Um, I know Trish in, uh, and Arizona has a network of people that provides us with her with a lot of revenues. Anyone that has like a physical farm that you maybe mail to that you can predict will give you, you know, ten thousand, fifty thousand, a hundred thousand dollars a year. I have I have a farm, um, but it doesn't bring me that that much in in revenue. I count on my farm to bring me probably twenty five to thirty percent income every year. 25 to 30 percent of your revenue is that what you're saying yeah and, and do you know what your do you know what your return to your investment is on that run offhand or uh, i'm sorry to put you on the spot well it uh it's probably costing me i would say 10 percent of that 70 percent. So, so that's that's like a 90 percent return that's pretty darn good it, 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 for most investments, Ron, that would be borderline illegal, <laughs> getting 90%, right? Or certainly in lending, that would be called usury. And, um, you know, but I do think that's not uncommon the way that uh, you're describing it. I'm just trying to pull up a, a graphic here if I can find it. Um, <clears throat> is there anyone else that, um, that, going into 2025 has consistent income that you can that you can forecast 
I know some for some of us it might be like Zillow or or an investment that we make, but anybody? I do, but um, the I think my goal is to actually not move out of it, but to um, add to it. I get a lot of leads from actually pre-approvals from Veterans United, which they're nationwide. Uh, but I have to pay a referral fee on all of them. And it's pretty, it's very consistent. So it's a nice way to date, build my database, but I need more transactions that are outside of that. So it's really solid, but I lose okay. a lot of the uh, commission on that just as a referral fee. Un un understood. So that's basically a, like a reverse investment that you pay as you succeed as that's opposed correct. to making an investment like Ron. Yeah. So, um, if if I were looking to um, have somebody buy your book of business, one of the first things we'd look at would be your database. And if your database isn't healthy, it's going to impair the ability for you to value your business. And why would you want to wait until you're considering, you know, maybe stepping back, retiring, slowing down before you get your business into um, a healthier condition? Okay. And I want to share this i found my graphic i'm going to share this with you and to me it's you know impactful and um this is a uh, a youtube individual uh brandon mulroon mulroon who i follow and uh, he talks about the compound effect of consistency okay and this is directly related to building out your database so if you started to make, I think this is 20 contacts a day, okay, over five years, you're going to have a significant amount of contacts, over a thousand conversations. And the first year, making 20 contacts a day, you know, having proficiency in that communication may only produce you four listings, and only two of them will be sold by the end of the year using you know, realistic math. But by year three, those same amount of calls will get you 37 listings and 25 closings. It's like a 10X. And then you run it out to year five, the compounding of keeping in touch with people and having those conversations, you know, could lead you to over 100 listings and over 100 transactions. But my question is, how many people are committed to having a certain number of conversations every single day? Okay. You do that, Beth? Can you can you share actually, can you share with absolutely. us how that? Actually, how does... yeah, re recently I um we we had our business planning, you know, the Remax business planning, and there was a thing called a daily activity tracker. And even though I track this in my, I use referral maker, I started writing it down on the daily activity tracker. And it's funny with calls is that uh, a lot of people are kind of fearful of making those calls because they don't know what to say. And it's just amazing when I call people that are in my database, how they thank me, like, like over the top, thank me for, um, uh, basically calling and they think it's just so wonderful that I'm staying in touch and, you know, that other people don't stay in touch and just in, in any capacity. So like, I can't, you know, I'm so glad you called and, and I'm definitely going to refer people to you. Yeah. It's just, it's just like the reverse of what people would think. And, and, you know, just, uh, Beth Steele from Scottsdale, Arizona and S T E E L E. Right. <laughs> right. So um, it's interesting that you say that because the other piece to um, having a healthy database is every conversation is not a transaction. And if you have that mindset, you're going to be you're, you're going to be disappointed and it's probably not going to be sustainable. Right. So I agree. If you call 20 people and you have 20 conversations, Maybe, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, maybe there's two possibilities of a transaction. Hey, my daughter might be moving or I'm looking to do something soon, right? Right. And then um, beyond that, you know, you might, oh, there's our junior uh, staff member coming. Um, beyond that, um, two conversations, you might have 
one or one half of a possible transaction. But if you do that five days a week, that's two and a half transactions that you have possible. And the follow-up on it's gonna be what helps those to materialize into, into revenue and income, okay? Right. Um, and I'm gonna even go back, because you said that a lot of times people don't know what to say. Yeah, the people, you know, a lot of um, a lot of realtors that I've spoken with, and my brother is a realtor in another state, and he just has this horrible fear of making the phone call. And, um, you know, I've explained to him that you don't have to necessarily ask him for something. You just show you care. And um, the it's it's interesting what I'm finding, especially recently, is when I call and if I have to leave a message, um, I get this text back or a call back, very apologetic. You know, I'm so sorry I couldn't pick up your call. It's great to hear from you. I'm, you know, glad you're thinking of me and so on. And and I think the more that happens, the less fear people have. And so I've tried to explain that to him. It's like, you know, they're not going to come over the phone line and and attack you for calling them and showing them that you're thinking of them. Uh, so it's it's all positive <sighs> for the most part. You know what's interesting, Beth? When you're helping your brother, you're actually helping yourself because you're building up more confidence as you teach. But you might not even realize that, but it's it's like a universal paradigm that happens. Right. Um, another thing, you know, we talk about people don't know exactly what they're going to say. Okay. A lot of people don't know what they're going to do with their time. Okay. So you get up, you're ready to start your work. And many of us go to our inbox and we do things that aren't going to further our, the growth of our business, especially first thing in the day. And um, I would encourage everybody to, you know, start to on Sunday, figure out what your plan looks like for the week. Um, build out some structure. I mean, we're all in this business because we're independent contractors we can work whenever we want to which is probably the biggest risk to our industry is we're so independent that you know we don't hold ourselves accountable to getting the result we need to get right um how if i don't if you want me asking how many conversations do you do a week or do you do it on a daily basis that you measure it beth uh gosh um a day 10 to 15. So you're actually speaking to 10 to 15 people absolutely and and would you say on average there's how many people would would have some sort of a dotted line to a transaction would it be one or two only um some of them I'm cultivating. So I would say I'm hitting the 12% mark. Well, actually, I am hitting the 12% mark from all so the people one, I talk to. So that's like 1.8 possibilities. Right. So that means 88% um, is just relationship building, right? That's correct. Now, a lot of those people are people that have been referred to me, like I said, from um, a lender. And some of those I can say come in and and are not. Um, I don't think they're they're ready to move anyway. Um, so I do understand that that's going to be a little bit lower because they're actually really not there. But when it comes to my database itself, um, those people are those people do take longer I think to cultivate because they may not be ready to go. But they always um, have me in mind to refer other people to me. And that's really a strong way to build, in my opinion. It takes a while, but it's it's much better to do that way. Fantastic. And, and Beth, I'm going to ask you to, to chime in if you're using any of these things when I start to talk about them. But okay. um, I want to mention that I, I think a lot of us, we, um, we have tunnel vision with our database. And some of the things that we neglect to incorporate into our database are... Um, people we interact with in our lives, okay? Um, and more importantly, people that we work with in the business. You know, how many different people do we, how many different resources do we need to have to be proficient in this business? You know, 
do we need a home inspector? Do we need a, um, a lender? Do we need an escrow officer? Do we need a, uh, a repairman? Do we need a, um, a insurance agent? Do we need a um, electric, like all these different trades, right? And we're constantly, you know, putting all these pieces together to help close transactions, right? But I think it's very few of us that lean into the people that we give business to and say, you know, hey, um, Mr. Insurance person, you know, Mrs. Insurance person, you know, who do you who do you know that I could help? You know, I'm I'm referring you business. I'd I'd like to get some referrals back. Right? Is that an uncomfortable conversation or is that a a fair conversation to have? What do you think? I think it's very fair. Right? If you're giving somebody business, do you think it's it's reasonable to say, hey, you know, uh, I, I've been working with you for two years. I haven't gotten one referral yet. You know, I just want to make sure that you have me top of mind. Right? And, and the good news is most of the people referring are not going to have that conversation with that professional, that referral source, right? right. I mean, we, we all have a CPA, right? Why don't they give us business? If we have a financial planner, why don't they give us business? We have, you know, multiple insurance people that we deal with. Um, all these people should be in our database. Um, we should have a scheduled period where we make a contact that's not related to a direct referral and we ask them, hey, you know, who do you know that I could help? Right? I mean, how many people do you think, um, I see there, Robert Barber, how many people do you think you have in a transaction? Uh, uh, how many people do you think that you've used in your career that have helped you close a transaction, if you were to guess? 20. 20? Yeah. Uh, but it's probably four times that. The different re repair people, the, the different insurance people. You probably have worked with 20 lenders at, for different buyers if they use their own, right? Some, yeah, probably. So What so, I was going to say, too, is, is like... Um, I went to my dry cleaner, who I was bringing my suits to every week, and said, uh, listen, you know, would it be all right with you if I put up a little sign here with my business cards? And uh, he said, yeah, that seems, that seems fair. And after I did that, I heard from other agents that they went in and tried to do the same thing, and, they, and he told them no. <laughs> So, uh, you know, first come, it, yeah, it doesn't hurt to ask, and uh, it's it's been very helpful to me. And, um, you not again, not to put you on the spot, but Robert, how many people do you think you have in your, your database, and do you have them sorted A, B, and C, or did you no. when you were more active? No, I, I, I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, uh, you know, it's, Probably it's something that, myself business. <laughs> I would say it definitely has, and uh, it's never too late. Maybe go in and just, you know, uh, clean up your day. Do you know how many contacts you have in there approximately or? A couple thousand. So if you did, you know, 10 or 15 a day, cleaned them up, you know, you'd be done soon. Um, hey, you Rob. know, they're, they're, yes, Rob, it's Howard. <clears throat> uh, over the, over the most recent years, Tyler, Gary, and I have had multiple conversations with both our older agents that are looking towards some form of retirement. And we run into younger agents that would like to have some way to, to grasp uh, an existing business. And the number one reason the deals fall apart is not because of the reputation of the older agent, but they just don't have anything other than what's between their ears in terms of a good database. They don't, they can't quantify their income. They can't quantify where it comes from. And you know, why would anybody want to buy that with a business or even get involved? It's non-saleable to your point. 
Now, Judy Ledour, you've got, if you don't have it already, time I can get it to you, but Judy Ledour has a very, very good book that she's written on how to transfer your assets and, and um, not your assets as much as your database as an older retiring agent and still be paid for some number of years afterwards and still be able to vacation with your, your family and friends, etc and not be painted into a corner where you're trying to grasp that one or two remaining deals a year where you're sharing bad information with your best friends. It's a, you know, and so if you're looking towards what does your future look like in three to five years as an agent, it begins with exactly what we're talking about this morning. Build an asset that is your database. And, and make this conversation a, a primary objective for your business planning for 2025. It is so important. I mean, why is it that doctors and dentists, et cetera, can migrate from a very good practice and get huge amounts of money for their practice? It's because they have a client base that, that provides lifetime income to the acquirer. And who's the people that are buying these practices? There are younger people coming out of medical school, dental school, that do not want to do a startup business. They'd like to be a part of a going, a going concern. Now, how is that any different than being a realtor that's been in the business for 30 years serving the public successfully? It's no different. It's no different. Yeah, and, and um, Howard, to your point, you know, if we can quantify that and, and we can start to to do what we would be doing when we're planning on retiring, it will be more abundant to us along the way, whether you're retiring in 40 years or four years or one year, the sooner you get your, your database organized, that's basically your business. That's the way that we look at a business. So, um, yeah, Alex, did you have a comment? I do. Yeah. So one of the things that I do when I evaluate my system, especially when I'm looking at the rest of my team's productivity is I'm looking at the history of conversations they've had with their clients. All right. Now we dropped off. That must be uh, cell service. So when he gets back, he'll talk about that. Um, and uh, when Alex was talking, he said what he tries to do for his team is hold them accountable. I know other team leaders, this is uh, one of the, key performance indicators or KPIs that you know most successful team leaders look at is you know what's the amount of contacts what's the number of contacts that are being made okay so um uh, sorry about that rob i just i just no worries a phone call came in right when i started talking and then i tried to stop it and it canceled both but um so when we look at the history of the contacts uh that's one of the ways that we identify you know, where these people are at. And when we're talking about return on investment, if we know that someone's going to be buying a home, you know, the average people buy and sell a property between five and seven years. And so if we could show the date stamp in which they transacted, where they live, um, what the conversations have been like, that's just going to increase the value of your business because it's kind of like, it's kind of like guaranteed money, you know, for people. And we want to we want to, when we talk about writing checks for six figures for our businesses, we want to be able to justify that if they need to get lending, if they're looking at potentially getting some kind of personal loan, they want to go to the, the lender and say, well, this is, this is the business. And, and, uh, and of course, if we don't have any history or we don't have any organization, uh, anybody that's going to really vet the business is going to say there's not a lot of value to it. So I think that's what we're talking about here is how do we get the big, the big check for after all these years of, you know, putting in time to marketing and developing these relationships, like how do we see the ROI and, and the history of, of relationship is going to be the, one of the biggest factors. Thank you. Um, I want, I want to um, chime in on another thing. I love the Remax pin, by the way. Uh, so, a uh, another thought I had is, you know, how many people that we've sold houses to to live in or that we've worked with might 
be excellent candidates to invest in real estate, but they don't understand it. What would you what would you guess? Would it be like if you called ten people that bought a house to live in, if they understood the investment game, how many people do you think would be a good candidate to buy a house for an investment? Anybody? And and my Canadian brother, you're saying two up in Canada, but twenty percent. Twenty percent. Anybody? Uh, anybody from? Uh, anybody else? Gary, uh, Gary Greenacre, what do you think? If you educated people on what buying real estate, 30 to 40 from Wilson, what do you think, Gary? I, I would say it'd be in that 30 to 40%. And how many people do you think actually do buy an investment property that you've sold the house to? Oh, Probably more gosh. like 3%, right? Yeah, I'd say less less than 10%, that's for sure. I mean, it'd be rare, rare if it's one out of 10. So are, are, are we then being a, uh, a true professional if we don't have those conversations and educate them. So that would I mean, be a good think, reason to call. I think there's room to, I think there's room to improve in our relationships, right? Hi, so, Rob, um, I'll jump in here. The matter of fact, I, it's Trisha Lehan from Scottsdale. I just received uh, an email from RBC Bank and I, a lot of my Canadian clients have done their financing through them and it was about investing and so i thought you know it's a perfect time to invest in properties in arizona with our growth so that's going to be a target of mine starting in the mid-december because so, most of them are coming and they're here now so trisha can canadians get conventional financing to buy houses or is that really difficult yes they can through RBC Bank. And the matter of fact, I'm meeting with another lender over the holidays, over Thanksgiving, that does finance for people all around the world, just not Canadians. So it, it's a great opportunity that I need to jump in on. Yep. And, um, you know, there are a lot of different products <laughs> or opportunities for people to buy investment properties. Um, any of our lenders um, want to chime in, you know, is it, how difficult is it to finance an investment property that, that will cash flow? Any lenders still on? Because I, I believe the, there's, um, although lending is a lot more um, documented, there are a series of banks and not just outliers that do debt service coverage ratio loans. So you can have somebody that doesn't show income that can buy an investment property as long as the property covers itself. Rob, I'm, so, I'm here. I, I missed your question. Okay. I, I said, um, <clears throat> do you think there might the be SCR loans? Right. So, so in, in our, um, in our, uh, database of, of contacts, there's probably more self-employed people now than there were five years ago and 10 years ago, at least in my opinion. And the finances are not as straightforward from a lending rule, right? There's no vanilla mortgages like there used to be W-2 person working for Merck for 30 years. Um, so if somebody becomes self-employed, that can be a challenge to get financing. They might even think I can't get it. I've only been self-employed for a certain period of time. But when you buy an investment property, can you just explain what a DSCR loan means and, and how easy that is? Yeah, basically we qualify the property, not the borrower. Borrower has to have good credit, you know, 680 or above, 660 or above. But when we do a DSCR loan, we're qualifying the property. So as long as the property covers the mortgage payment, the rental from that, the rent, if it's, if the rent is, you know, 3000 a month um, and, uh, and the DSCR covers it, it's a, it's called the one Oh ratio. You can, you can buy that with 20% down and we don't need to show any income from the borrower. So we're qualifying the property, not the borrower, but getting back to your point, self-employed people, it's a, it's great because I had a borrower that had 
lost $13,000 on his tax returns. But when I did the bank statement loan for him, he actually showed 80,000 in income. So we can derive different income sources of income from the tax return. If not, we'll just go with the DSCR loan where the property, just, as long as it covers, as long as the rent covers uh, the mortgage payment, they'll qualify. Right. And, and some of us in the real estate industry have creative accountants, right? You're on mute. I'm here. As in some of us in the real estate industry have creative accountants and maybe we don't show, um, we, we might, use some of our personal expenses as business expenses. Um, and a lot of self-employed people do the same thing. So maybe you even want to look into buying a piece of real estate. You'll be your best client. But these are things that are conversations, I think, that need to be had. I think we need to organize our database. You know, I'm guilty of it. I need to spend more time cleaning up my database. Um, but this is what's going to give you residual recurring higher value income, higher quality of life, having consistent, you know, one of the biggest challenges in this business is the, the um, up and down of the income, right? It drives you crazy. Okay. But if you work your database, you know that everything's going to be coming. You know, that at the end of the year, you're going to do 40 transactions or 28 transactions or whatever your historical number is. Um, you know, Beth, when you make your calls, you probably have a, a reasonable expectation of how much business it's going to generate, right? From 15 calls a day? Yes. Beth Steele is still on? Yes. So so these are the things that really, you know, drive value. Or if you're, if you're Glenn Baker and you go on a, you know, a, a vacation for six weeks and, you know, you know how to work your database, you know, you can keep that revenue machine, you know, uh, generating and that, that, that adds value. Okay. Um, and the, um, uh, compound effect of being consistent is undeniable. You know, if you, if you're consistently doing it, you know, the third contact, the fourth contact, the seventh contact is going to be better than just making a hundred first contacts. Okay, it's it's adding relationship value. Um, and uh, I see, uh, you know, Alex, um, if you, uh, I don't know if you're able to pop on again, just to explain if anybody wasn't on last week's mastermind, what, what it is that <clears throat> we're launching. Yeah, I didn't want to interrupt, so I just dropped it in the chat. So for anybody that hasn't registered yet, uh, go ahead and sign up. There's a link in the chat there for our Path to Platinum program that's kicking off in January. I think this is actually a perfect, you know, tie into what you're talking about, Rob, which is, you know, working on our business instead of in our business. And, um, you know, if we spend the time prospecting, then we're, we're doing the work that we're talking about. All we're asking of you is just to log that, log that, log that information into some system that's going to be able to, you know, help you quantify the value of your database. And so if you're interested in growing your database, you're interested in creating value from your database, you might want to register for the Path to Platinum that's coming. Uh, it's going to take agents that are in that 50 to 100K range, get them up to 250. That's our goal as a company is we want to help everybody increase their production. And uh, I remember taking this course when I was 19 years old in a very competitive market with a bunch of skilled agents uh, in a retirement community on the West coast of Canada. And once I took this program, you know, back in the day, 20 years ago, uh, it gave me the confidence that I needed to make those phone calls. It gave me the confidence in learning how to present and learning how to prospect uh, efficiently. And so uh, that's my little plug for today. So please register. We would love to see you on. We have over 40 people signed up right now. And, uh, and I'm excited. I'm excited to kick it off with a bunch of professionals and uh, hopefully we'll see you on the other side in January. And, and um, I'm trying to draw a parallel to this, Alex, but you know, you know, I don't mind investing in people, but, but you know, it really, you know, it, it's just the principle that really annoys me. It's like, if I were to invite everybody to, uh, to go to a sporting event and I bought everybody a ticket, and then 10 people don't call and they just don't show up and they waste the ticket. Just, and just right. for me, for me, that, that 
frustrates me um, more than the dollars. It's just like, you know, why am I investing in somebody who doesn't take the time to do it? And I think that's the problem. Well, but Remax people don't do that, right? I that's what other agents, that's what other agents, have, other companies do. Unfortunately, I've had to, I've had that happen a few times, um, but that, that's something I, I, that's something that's just a little pet peeve of mine. And you know, we are not a company that sounds like K and W, where you know we're looking to sell a product or or do this as a side hustle to run a training department. I mean, that would certainly be worth it. But you know, what we're looking to do is we're looking to get leverage and get a result. Okay, so I'm looking to um, make it fun, gamify it, you know, give the winning team something, give the winning team leader something. And I also want people to continue with it because if you, if you start, I want you to finish it. Okay. Yeah. And Alex, maybe you want to talk a little bit about some of the, the concept or, or the, the consequence to um, being half in. Right. So we are offering this for free. Rob's invested into people like myself uh, and other management to help put this together. And so, you know, big thanks to Rob for that. Um, so what we've decided to do is uh, we want to have lots of prizes and giveaways. We already have a set budget for that. We've discussed what the prizes are, which I will, I will be announcing in the weeks ahead. We don't want to give people too much information right now. We want to lead it up to the, to the January 1st kickoff. But, um, you know, what we decided to do is we want to uh, reward those that stick with the uh, seven week program. And so the agents that commit, but then they don't follow through and they, you know, because our teams that we're going to establish inside this uh, uh, group, we call it the squads, uh, they're depending on everybody's productivity as far as making the effort. Um, and if someone's, you know, not following through with their commitments, you know, life happens, it's, it's going to be a $500 uh, penalty and that's going to be added to the prizes, not to Remax select groups bottom line we're talking about to the prizes of the competition so you know we're we're trying to incentivize people to stick with it um, but for those that can't and we put our time and energy into you know helping you and your business uh, there will be a charge <clears throat> the charges if you don't complete it so and, and, and again it's not a it's not a money <clears throat> I, I, I want this to have an impact and i want you to make sure that you're committed to it before you go because it's not it's not a money maker i'm not going to make money off the 500 dollars. we're just going to throw it in the pot to make it sweeter for the people who do it but i hope everybody finishes it because i really want to have an impact you know i really really know that this works i know that alex back in the 90s or was it the 2000 you actually 2000 you, yeah. you paid you paid several thousand dollars to take it several times and yeah. it's had an impact on your career you know clearly Huge. you you've um i've taken it five some... times <clears throat> five and, times and, and alex isn't slow he just needed to refresh you got you know what it is it's about creating habits and it's about doing things over and over again you know the business is not always pretty it's about creating prospecting habits that you just it becomes second nature and you know i'm hearing some of the agents talking today um you know, on the, on the call and those 10 to 15 calls a day, like that's, that's what the top producers do. They're always on the phone. They're always making those contacts and they're always checking in and uh, they're not taking days off all the time. They're, they're working five to six days a week, hopefully uh, in, you know, growing their business and um, yeah, they're living pretty good lives right now. So if you're interested no, I, in growing, this is definitely yeah. the program. And, and Alex, I'm always, in, I'm always curious and, and I like to fill my brain with stuff that will help me help others. And I've been, the algorithm on YouTube will, will suggest videos that will go beyond videos that I'm watching. And I've watched a lot that I'm getting a lot of old stuff, 15 year old stuff from 2010. And I'm listening to what they're saying in 2010 and it's as relevant as it is right now. Oh, we have an inventory shortage. We have this. We have, you know, it's just amazing how good habits solve all the problems, right? And um, there there was some discussion back then about a saying that I like to put out there is good markets create bad habits and 
challenging markets require good habits. They require good skills, right? When the market was abundant, wasn't everybody frustrated with the fact that there were 37 offers, it was hard to work with a buyer. There were a lot of unqualified professionals in the industry that were unfortunately still earning paychecks with the other side carrying them. So now the market's pivoting, okay? And we need to make sure that we keep our skills sharp and, and we, we have strong business habits to take care of the clients that rely upon us. Okay. Um, you know, Rob, I, I look I, at, go ahead, sorry. Uh, I just want to add something. I'm beyond excited about this. The opportunity to grow your business to increase your average sale price, to have have something like this offered to you, uh, I feel is exceptional. Uh, I've met with Alex, I've spoken with Alex. Uh, Alex is very modest, he's highly successful. And he adheres to, to what he preaches. And I think the, I, I thank you Rob for bringing Alex to us. But I, I think this is an opportunity that you don't want to miss. I really don't think we'll have people dropping out, Rob. So it might cost you a little more money <laughs> as far as the prizes, because uh, this is going to be a very exciting, worthwhile event. Uh, I can tell you right now that I've spoken to a lot of people and the majority of our top producing agents are participating in this. Even the synergy of being with those people is going to increase your business. So that's my sales pitch. Sorry. Love it, Colleen. Yeah. Thank you. That's great. So, um, you know, this in indirectly ties into our, our database, um, but our database truly is our business. Um, and if, if there's two things you take away from this event, one is... Um, look at all the people that you hey, Rob. refer Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Can you just mute everyone again? Sure. Thank you. So um, if you look at everybody that you refer business to, or everybody that's in your life, like your dry cleaner, like Robert mentioned, um, you know, all those professionals that we work with, because I'll bet you if you actually look at everybody that you utilize to get transactions done um, and that you refer out, if you were to let them know that, hey, you know, I would like to get some re referral business back to me, I think that's a reasonable request. I think anybody that's getting business from us would find that to be reasonable. And it's just a matter of we're, we don't systematically ask for that. Okay. Um, so doing adding those people to our database and then cleaning up our database coupled with having the uh, time blocking will really move the needle tremendously for you. Okay. That will, that will create a business. And if you've ever been in the business where a deal falls apart and you're like, well, I know two deals are going to fall apart. It doesn't really phase me. Okay. That's the, that's the mindset I want everybody to have. Because over time, there are some transactions that inevitably fall apart. There's nothing you can do about it. Okay, but if you have that abundance mindset and you know that you're doing all the right activities, you know, at the end of the year, you're going to make whatever your number is. If that's 300,000, you'll make 300,000. That number is 150,000, you make 150,000. You will be doing those numbers. Sorry, uh, homesick from school today. Um, but uh, there is no doubt, there is no doubt it's certainty when you do all the right activities that the numbers will roll out, the numbers will play out, okay? And, um, you know, spending a little bit of time cleaning up your database, dedicating the time to make those calls, um, it, it really makes this chaotic, independent contractor business into a um, consistent, reliable, uh, more enjoyable experience. You know, who, who wouldn't want to be able to go away on vacation and know that everything was, was so tight, tightened up and under control, right? 
who wouldn't want to know that I'm not concerned about the highs and the lows because I know with all the activities I'm doing, my return will be X, right? I personally, you know, I, I am not adjusting my plans because the market might be up five or down 10%. You know, um, when the market goes down, a lot of people exit, right? So that means that the people that are in the business you know, should be able to gain and keep their absolute amount of business and maybe even grow market share, right? I know uh, when I look at the top 10 performers in these, uh, like uh, we have a thing called real estate statistics or broker metrics. If you look at the top 10 or the top 25, it's always 90%, 92%, 89% of them. These are the top people in the MLS. They're doing more than they did the year before. And they're doing more than the year before they did that, even if the market is down. Because they're doing the right activities. They're doing the things that are gonna help them grow their business. What limits us shouldn't be the market. What limits us should be what we do in the market. Right? I mean, I, I believe people need us, people need confident, competent, good communicating professionals more now than they ever need it as the market gets to be challenging, right? Because people are people are afraid or they're uh, uneducated or misinformed and that causes them not to take action. And I don't know who I was talking to yesterday, but I was somebody was saying that they're having some challenges converting their buyers. And immediately I, I was like, when you show them houses, you know, you want to ask, you want to set the right expectation and say, hey, when we look at a house, you know, before we look at the next one, I'm going to ask you to rate it on a scale of one to seven, with five to seven being offer territory. Now, think about that. If I, if I said to you, if I said, Wilson, um, when, once we see at this house, I'm going to ask you to rate it on a scale of one to seven. How many other people have asked you to use a scale from one to seven, by the way? Have you ever heard that before? Yeah. Usually You've heard seven? <laughs> most, people, most people are like one to five or something yeah. like that, right? But, and I say five to seven is offer territory. So you look at a house that meets 80% of your criteria, it's still a five, right? So yeah. if you see a five, you know, I, I subtly put it in your mind, that's offer territory. That's where we're going to start talking about making offers so that we can get you into that house because we're not looking for the perfect 10. The perfect 10 doesn't exist. This is the communication piece to the business that gets um, gets improved when we continue to educate and network and share ideas amongst ourselves. Right? Hey, Robert, you may, I, I you may eventually... Mention, I'm sorry. Go ahead. go ahead, Robert. I just wanted to mention that uh, Glenn Baker posted in the chat um a sheet that they use to help uh them remember those people in their database that they've forgotten and so it's got the link right there to it rob i'd like to add i'd like to add um i work with uh, mostly seniors and not to be morbid but um the repeat customers in that category or demographic is very um unique <laughs> So uh, they're either dead or dying kind of thing and not to be morbid, but um, my relationships I've developed are with financial advisors and elder law attorneys so that they can refer their clients who already know, love and trust them. And then therefore um, me as a referral is already trusted um, by the recipient or the client. So that's where I've developed a lot of, um, of my um, um database with that type of uh, professional. And then I started doing um, charitable real estate uh, gifting. And so I started working again through financial advisors and nonprofits with their donors, their donor base who may want to contribute non-cash assets, which is their real estate and help them, you know, it's a win, win, win. So that's kind of where my database is, is more on the business to business side. So um, 
even even with the um you know elder you know maybe there is even opportunities to you know talk to the you know to the heirs or the rest of the family right with regards to that and and it might be a lower percentage for sure but you know communication building relationships you know a lot of times you, know, you might say hey you know my clients move into an assisted living facility and they're never going to buy another house i'm done with that client but maybe not you know, maybe they have a friend a neighbor you know maybe there is other opportunities that you can you know lean into and you know um i don't want to use the word exploit in, in a bad way but i want to say just lean into to help others right if you do if you do the right job you can help others by having those conversations uh, yeah, not to my, say they were left behind because they moved into assisted living or memory care, but yeah, there there are a lot of transactions that can come from from the heirs and from their neighbors who have known their struggles. And usually in the age restricted communities, um, there's a lot of referral um, for those from those people as well. So, so one of our um, better agents um, takes snow days in New Jersey to clean up the database and kind of get all organized. Now, being in Arizona and Florida, that's not um, that's not relevant. However, you know, maybe a Black Friday after Thanksgiving would be a good day to, to relax and, you know, just sit there and do mindless work cleaning up your database. You know, if that's something that, you know, you have in you, um, whatever your, schedule is it might be a perfect time to do that so um yeah you know, i'm just yeah i'm just such a strong believer that if you do all the right activities that you'll have consistency in this business and it will be um it, it will be what real freedom is right i mean freedom faux freedom is i can do whatever i want whenever i want but then you get freaked out because the revenue and the consistency isn't there, but real freedom is having the discipline to do what you need to do. And then when you take time off and when you pay your bills and when you make your savings, you truly have freedom then because you've done all the right activities. Okay, that's what real financial freedom and business is. It's not about not having a boss. I mean, your bank account is your boss, your results, the scoreboard is your boss. Your divorce attorney. Um, uh, hey, Ralph, can I throw something in that I, I started this morning? Sure. So I, I looked at a transaction that actually goes right along with what we're talking about. And I just did a transaction that I would put in the difficult category. Um, I, I It was a rough cooperation with the other agent. And... I had to have, I, I looked at the list of people just on my side that we brought out and we had over 37 independent people, um, whether that was handyman, painters, cleaning people, uh, so on, involved in the transaction. Well, this morning I wrote a, a with thank you, Chief Baker, chat GPT uh, email, and I sent it out to every single one of them. And I have, it was just a thank you. It was taking me back to the days of my mom forcing me to write thank you notes to everyone after Christmas. And I, I thanked every single person for a successful transaction. And I let them know that we closed and my client is very happy with their service. And that I was very happy. And the new ones that I used, I said, I'm adding you to my database of professionals that I trust. And out of it, I have one, one of the people that I also included in it was the, uh, the funeral home. Um, that is handling the the death of one of the family members. And I said, thank you so much for providing me with the documents that allowed this to go easier, so on and so forth. And they called me and they said, hey, we have people all the time that have passed away that are looking to sell their home. Can you please bring us a stack of business cards? So I'm meeting with the, and I'm meeting with the funeral director tomorrow on his day off. He's coming in to meet with me. Um, and then I also, my handyman, I'm listing his house, uh, December 4th. And then I got a call from the plumber who turns out lives three blocks away from me. And his daughter is trying to buy her first house. And he said, I love how professional you were. Um, and he said this, the email that I got this morning 
He's like, it just, it changed it. I've never received a thank you from a real estate agent. Would you mind meeting with my daughter and me to help her find her first home? And that was within three hours of me sending an email. But every single one of them is also getting a handwritten thank you from me because we all know that spam emails exist. Um, so I, I'm sending it out. But it was just a simple thing of thanking everyone in it. And it made me realize also just how many people are involved in a real estate transaction. 37 people on my side. And that didn't even include their stuff. So it, it was kind of refreshing okay. and easy. So if... If you if you care, just before you pop off, if you could just write what CRM you use. Somebody had asked, and I'm also curious to see what CRM most of us are using. And um, uh, another announcement is everybody gets off on next Friday for Black Friday. I'm going to defer our mastermind and let you reserve your energy for the path to platinum and then the following Friday. So I want to wish everybody a really uh, happy, joyous Thanksgiving with your family. And as always, we're here to help. Um, I'm so excited. I've gotten several of you had come to me with price reductions or um, new listings. Um, I've been exposed to, you know, four hundred thousand dollar property to ten plus million, uh, two million dollar property this morning that I'm helping. Um, reposition um, this is really exciting to me i like to help find solutions i like to see how it works and and first and foremost always try to figure out how do i help the client to get the outcome that they want that will give us um, the ability to get more referral business so i wish everybody a happy thanksgiving i will put on the document um you know glenn's uh attachment and i'll also put on the document which is in the email that you get um the different crms and if i if it's easy enough for me to tally i'll tally who's using which one so that we could say 25 people using kv core bold trail four people using this two people using that so i'll do that all for you and, and uh, have a wonderful and happy thanksgiving i'm going to stay on here just to read out the uh the chat and um so you're all Free to enjoy the rest of your day and have a great weekend. Okay. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, Rob. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye, Happy Thanksgiving, Bye. Rob. Have a happy Thanksgiving, Rob. Yeah, thank you. Hey, Rob. Yes, sir. One of the settings you can have uh, for the um, ongoing meetings on Fridays, if you have the setting that automatically everybody gets muted prior to the meeting, I find that the past couple of meetings I've been on, like there's a lot of people that keep their mics off and there's been some conversations that have been like very personal or, or confidential. And so I would just, they don't, they don't know that they're not muted. So I think if we could just have it as like a, a setting that it automatically hits you as, as mute, um, that would probably that would be, be uh, that would be a great idea. I will okay. look into that and maybe uh, maybe I'll uh, get on with you uh, next week uh, an hour before and we'll just uh, play around with the settings. But um, I got everything. I'm going to add this to the um, handout sheet and um, Fred or whoever's doing the editing, if you could edit it when it ended so that um, you don't have all this dead time. Have a great weekend, everybody. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.